Thank you, our patron, Madam Dokas Regadi. Your Excellency, sir, and all protocol observed, I'm standing here to give a brief of this church initiative. Today is a day that will go down in the history as the day the Church of Kenya united under one purpose rose to a momentous occasion to give the country direction on leadership and governance. It is the day that the church said no more to fence seating. No more to praying it safe. No more to neutrality and no more to fear. It is a day of going back to the factory setting as it was in the first biblical governor, government where the prophet, having inquired of God, installed the kings of the land. Pentecostal and Evangelical clergy of Kenya, which is here today, is the common voice and platform of the clergy to advance their agenda as responsible citizens and faithful servants of the Lord. We began as Pentecostal and Evangelical Alliance of Kenya, but later agreed that we are defense the cause of uh, as spiritual leaders. Your Excellency, sir, let me start on behalf of these men and women of God to thank you and to celebrate you for your courage, charisma, dedication towards your faith and your nation. Sir, you have helped small communities get their Bibles in local languages and dialects. You have defended the church. You have defended the clergy. And you have defended your God. Even when that threatened your political survival, you have given offerings to churches and supported pastors with means of transport. You have stood on the light side of history. Your spouse has led this nation in prayers and has refreshed ministers of the gospel in this land. Indeed, the words of Luke 7, 4 and 5 applies that you deserve the best because you are a man that loves our nation and a man that has built our synagogues. <laughs> Your Excellency, sir, the clergy and the church have had deep reflections after religiously, having religiously prayed and voted for our political leaders since independence without meaningful change in our people. And just as the days of the old, when God wanted to do a great thing, he chose a man or a woman for that moment, we are here to affirm that you are that man for this moment. <laughs> we 
We are here today to affix our joint seal on a document that was bathed by prayer and that has went through a rigorous process of consultation and consensus building. The document we will sign today has traveled across and along the length and breadth of this beautiful country. It all started when our patron, Pastor Dorcas Rigadi, shared the burden with the spiritual mothers and the spiritual fathers as it has been indicated here in this meeting. And after consolidation of all the thoughts, we have made sure that the men and the women that are seated in this meeting today agree to the issues raised touching on the threats of the church and the great opportunities the church has in the days to come. The Pentecostal and Evangelical clergy of Kenya is a special purpose vehicle to deliver the vision of the church, her interest and aspiration. It is not an addition to the long list of other umbrella bodies, but rather the ferry that carries all across to safety in order for them to contribute to the good of the society with God at the center. Our engagements with the clergy that we had were three-pronged. First, we shared the agenda of the church as it is contained in the Memorandum of Understanding and we have it at the back of our programs. The details, the highlights of which we have at the back of our program touches on the guarantee or guaranteeing the independence of the church by resumption of registration of the church in Kenya. <laughs> by establishment of a registrar of Christian organization in this beautiful land of Kenya. guarantee the dependence of the church by establishing self-regulation of the church and stopping the discussion of about 10 years on whether the church should be regulated by the state. <laughs> Establishment of cabinet portfolio for Christian affairs. And also guarantee dependence of the church by setting up a commission for chaprince, mediation, and arbitration. Number two in the church agenda is the inclusion of the clergy in both the national and the county governments of your government as the faith in this nation. By appointment of clergy to state corporations, to cabinet, to committees and boards of government, foreign missions, parliament and county boards and executive members portfolio. <laughs> that this uh, public land to churches. And waiver 
on marriage fees for our children. Two, abolish Nema levies that are against evangelization and the work of the church. Number three, tax waivers on church equipment. Finally, number five, agenda for the church is supporting of establishment of national clergy circle. We are asking that your government will provide seed capital to the clergy circle as a stimulus package. And we are asking for provision of infrastructural and capacity support. We can give a better hand. As we were moving across this country in the mentioned 30 counties, in all these engagement meetings, the consensus rating was about 90%. There was a unanimous resolution across all counties that the church was safe and will be safe in the hands of His Excellency, Dr. William Samoy Luto. And as we continued, in our engagement with our people, here is what they said in answer to the question, why do you make him the choice in our coming general election? In Kilifi, a pastor emotionally said, was set not for Dr. William Luto, my people that I serve, the Giriamas, would probably never read the Bible in their language. In Nyeri, it was noted by one pastor that there was a photo evidence of you, the deputy president, carrying a Bible in your youth and having participated in evangelism door to door, mass evangelism through crusades, <laughs> and there is evident evidence that this is the same heart that you have for the church. In Bugoma, a clergy noted with admiration how you, the deputy president, opened his, uh, how you, the deputy president, have opened your Sugoi Lulo home and your Hasla mansion here in Kalen to be a place of prayer. In Bomet, the shouts were, Kenya Kwanza, Kanisa Bele, without fear. <laughs> In the Lakanidi, it was noted, the Deputy President's spouse, Mama Resho, Ruto, offers a great pillar of prayer for her husband and this nation. In the lobby, it was said, if this is the way, the deputy president will partner with the church, then we have entered into a season that brings 
the game changer for this country moving forward. Finally, in Kiabu, the remark was, this election is about light and darkness. And unless you don't live in Kenya, it is never hard to tell the difference. They said, we choose light. We choose the deputy president. Your Excellency, sir, the clergy in this country has suffered the blunt of exclusion from previous administrations, ranging from imposing ban on registration of churches, being absent on decision-making tables, punitive taxes and levies, and difficulties in accessing government resources. The reason the Kraj has decided to give specific direction to the members it leads is because the threats to the church are real on one side. They are real. The threats to the church are real. And on the other hand, opportunities are Im immense opportunities are immense. Threats of closing small and mushrooming churches is against the biblical truth. Because the Bible that we use, that we believe in, and all of us gathered here Stand for says where two or three are gathered in his name. He is there in the midst of them. And we are asking this question. How and who can close down a church where God is in attendance. How and who can close a church of two or three where God is in attendance? In the document we are signing today, the pertinent issues to these men and women of God and to millions within and outside our borders, when you accepted to walk with us on this journey without a single demand on our part, it dawned on us that God was leading you in the paths of fearless leaders and positioning you, uh, you are, and positioning you into the annals of history. I must say we are proud to be associated with you. Your Excellency Sir, politics aside, you are celebrated across geographies across creeds and ages. You are the leader that we all want. Today does not mark the end of anything for the church, but this day marks the beginning of everything contained in this document for the clergy and for the Kenyan church. I will end with a quote from Nehemiah 9, 13, 8. In view of all this, we are making abiding agreement 
putting it in writing, and our readers, our Lephites, and our priests are affixing their seals to it. As I conclude, allow me also to appreciate one of your own, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, who has walked the path of the church initiative with us so strongly by giving us encouragement, financial support, and he kept on inquiring on how we were doing at every stage. Your Excellency, the thousands of the clergy in this country, they are organizing a national clergy summit to which we are inviting you to attend as one of our own, as a friend to the church, as a supporter and defender of the cause of the clergy, and a firm believer in the faith of our God. Sir, this is our humble request, that when that time comes, please uh, join us.